Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Kato Stroke Pico Festidiog Railway Small England 040 TT prints. Is this model any good? Well, we're going to find out. So here we are with the Kato Stroke Pico 009 Small England 044 TT and this was announced back in 2019 I believe and I have been looking forward to this model. This has arrived from Rails of Sheffield and the one I've gone for as you can see is Prince in the maroon livery and the reason I've gone for this one is because I have seen this particular one in real life. I saw it last year at the Statfold Barn Railway during the Trangill 50 event and they had this as a guest locomotive. I've also seen Palmerston as well at the National Railway Museum back in 2012 at Railfest. So Prince was the one I wanted, that's the one I've got and I've been looking forward to this. So we're going to get this model open out of the box and we're going to get it down on the layout and have a look because I've really been dying to get my hands on this and open it up. <laughs> so here we have Prince out of the box and down on the narrow gauge part of the layout. So first thing to report, packaging was up to standard, nothing arrived damaged or unclipped that had to be sorted out, as you clearly saw on the unboxing, so that's great as always. Only thing I had to do was upon unboxing the model, I had to dust off a few bits of polystyrene that had dropped off the packaging and gone onto the model. Out of the box, this model is an absolute beautiful runner in both directions, which is what we want to see because when you're paying the prices we are today for models you expect them to arrive in absolute tip-top condition not just in terms of quality control but also in regards to working straight out of the box as well so making a start with the detail so first of all to get the least exciting bit out of the way we have what they call the mounted couplings now you can change these for Arnold couplings that get supplied with the model which for those of you that model N-Gage the, cu the couplings that you get with those is actually the same couplings that you get with this supplied with the model which is interesting because I've never seen Arnold couplings supplied with 009 stock before we have a separately fitted handrail on the smoke box it is a plastic handrail I think that's been painted to look like a brass handrail but for a second I actually did think that it was a metal handrail and painted but it's not moulded it's separately fitted and it has been painted and it looks the part you've also got a pre-fitted vacuum pipe as you can see and you've also got a separately fitted smoke box door pin dart on the smoke box door on the buffer beam we have some nice rivet detail and the Lalco's running number, number 2 crisply printed onto the buffer beam there or in this case it should be just a beam because this Lalco doesn't have buffers on the front of the Lalco we have the sand pots we have separately fitted handrails on the saddle tanks and again they've been painted just like the handrail on the smoke box we've also got the steam piping as well as you can see and again that's separately fitted it's not moulded and we've also got lots of rivet detail as well we have some very nice printed detail on the nameplates 
they are just printed, you do not get any extra nameplates applied to this model, which is nice as that would have been. You know, the printing on the nameplates that we get on the model is still nice, and I suspect you possibly could still source some etch nameplates from somewhere else if you were fussed by that. For me, though, it's not something that detracts from the model. We have glazing in the cab windows, and I like how the window rims have also been painted. You've also got the whistles as well. They are made out of plastic, but they are painted, and they are very nicely painted as well. The rear cab windows also have glazing in them, and you can just see into the back of the cab there, you have the back head. None of the detail on that has been painted, but the detail is there. But I suppose if you wanted to, you could paint that detail up yourself. Moving to the detail that's underneath the cab, as you can see, that has been replicated superbly. Moving to the tender now, we have metal wheels on the tender, we have lots of rivets, and we have the axle boxes, as you can see. We have a plastic coal load in the tender, which I don't think can be removed, as I have already tried to do that myself. Although it does look like it can be removed, but you could still put some real coal in the tender if you wanted. On the rear of the tender, you have a pre-fitted vacuum pipe, and the Loco's ring number, number two, very crisply and neatly applied on the rear of the tender. Moving to the livery application, which is stunning. The livery has been very neatly and evenly applied, with no imperfections anywhere. And I think this red livery really does suit this locomotive. And you've also got the lining as well, crisply applied on the tender body sides, on the cab sides and on the saddle tanks. And you've even got crisply printed builder's plates and the Festinio Grauway logo on the tender. And the printed detail is just stunning. And on the other side, all the detail is the same, with the exception of the steam piping, which we don't have on this side of the loco, as per the prototype. It has to be said that Kato have captured the look of the real locomotive spot on. Not only is the shape and proportions correct, but the detail is also accurate as well. So just to talk about the chassis, the first thing to note, as you can see, the rear wheels on this model have traction tyres. Now, I'm perfectly fine with them because if it needs traction tyres then so be it, especially if it needs to get up hills or inclines. However, you don't get any spares supplied with the model and there's no mention of spares either in the instruction manual so what are you supposed to do when the traction tyres eventually perish? Will they be supplying spares at a later date? I hope they will. You also have the connection for the loco and the tender, and I understand that this loco can run without the tender, although you will find that it won't be able to pull any stock if you disconnect it. So what are my final thoughts then on the Pico Stroke Cato Festinio Railway Small England 044 TT? I think it's a great model. My only criticism is not the model itself, but it's the fact that we don't get any spare traction tyres. I've looked on the Kato website and at the time of filming this video there's no mention of traction tyres for these models on the website and I have looked. So let's hope in future that they do become available at a later date. But apart from that though, it's a superb model. Is it worth the money? I definitely think so. It's definitely a great time to go 009 now because years ago when it first came out there was nothing in ready to run, it was all kit built stock and the amount of RTR stock we have now for 009 is just fantastic and the small Englands I highly recommend and it's definitely worth the money because if you take into consideration Batman's Double Fairly that came out last year is 200 quid the small England is 130 some people might find it still expensive but it's not bad going for a model like this it doesn't lack in detail or quality so if you have 009 and you want one of these models then get one. Now before I end this video there's one thing that I do want to show you on camera. Now 
with this model supplied you do get the little knobs to fit on the tender front and on the sand pots so this is the little knob you get and this is attached to what they refer to in the instruction manual as a grab iron and basically what you do you have to cut them off the sprue that's applied with the model and then just to demonstrate I will fit all the others off camera but I'm just going to show you the one being fitted on camera so what you need to do is you just need to insert this into the hole on top of the sand pot and you just push it in like so and then you just pull and twist and there you go that's that little knob now in place and fitted onto the sand pot it's as easy as that so we'll go around now and fit all the others onto the model right so I've added all the knobs as you can see there the, they are on the tender and on the sand pots you don't need to use any glue at all as I demonstrated because they fit tightly into the holes so they're not going anywhere it's a good job as well they give you spares as well because one of these decided to break off the guard iron and trying to use tweezers that shot off and it's never going to be seen again so now to end the video I'm gonna get this model running on the layout so you can see it in action so thank you very much for watching my review on the Pico Stroke Kato Small England I hope you've enjoyed it as ever, if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to smash the like button. And also, please do check out all my other content I've got on the channel. But until next time, take care. ta -ra. Right, viewers, it's now been a week since I last did my conclusion for this model. Now, I did manage to film some shots of this running on the layout, but not all the shots that I wanted to film because this model for no reason decided it was just going to stop working it was definitely a problem with the model it wasn't a problem with the layout because I ran my other 009 models and they all worked perfectly fine this model for some reason just stopped working I wasn't very happy about this so I got in touch with Rouse of Sheffield and told them about the problem they couldn't replace the model because this particular version prints they had sold out on but they did say that they were willing to take the model back and try and rectify the issue for me so I sent this model back off to them in the post and it's arrived just now as I'm filming this particular clip I don't know what the issue was with this model and how they sorted it out because they didn't include a note but this model is now working again and absolutely beautifully the model arrived to me unscathed as well in the post with no damage and it's just great to have this model again and now hopefully touch wood there won't be any more problems with it I still stand by what I say in my conclusion the only point of criticism really I would say is you don't get any spare traction tyres for the model and when I looked on the website they haven't yet listed any spares for them and also in the instruction manual it doesn't tell you how to get the body off although I understand now that someone on the internet has shown you how to do that I believe it's on a forum somewhere but it would still have been good if they had included how to take the body off in the instructions but apart from that this is still a great model I know some others have, have had experience damage with these coming in the post but Pico, all credit to them, have said that they are going to take on these damaged models and repair them which is great to see of Pico, it's fantastic customer service this is still a well made product, I personally can't fault it the only thing that this model needs is crew and the Festiniog bug box coaches which it shall be getting at some point but for now I'm going to stop jabbering and I'm going to let you guys see this model in action so take care <laughs>